If you want to find a snake in the wild, the best place to start, in my opinion, is by a body of water. Because for most species, that takes care of two important resources. One, obviously water, and two, food. And so today, we're here at a lake in central North Carolina, and my goal is to show you how to find snakes at five different levels of difficulty, from beginner to expert. Let's get started. All right, what we have here is the perfect level one snake. This is an eastern worm snake. Now these are a totally harmless, non-venomous species that are very common all throughout North Carolina, but rarely seen above ground. And I would say probably 95% or maybe more of their lives are spent undercover or literally in the ground where they hunt their favorite prey, the earthworm. Typically, eastern worm snakes will have a pinkish underbelly with a gray to brown dorsal coloration. Now, I consider these a perfect starter snake because as you can see, when handled, they're extremely docile and they can be relatively easy to find if you're in an area with plenty of rocks or the rotten logs that these snakes like to hide under during the day. Now, this one is very deep in shed, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it right back under its rock where it can get to that in peace. But what a perfect little beginner snake to find and it's time to move on to level two. All right, see you, little friend. Ready to get back under your rock? Have a good shed. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa, you're not a water snake. What's up? That is awesome. It's a garter snake. Okay, well, it took me several weeks longer than expected to find our level two snake, but finally, here it is. Look at this absolutely beautiful common garter snake. Now, when I was a kid, I learned these as garden snakes with a D, but they're actually called garter snakes with a T, and they are called that because of the garter-like pattern on their back. I think it's like a checkerboard, and then that dorsal stripe, which runs down the entire length of the body. And those are the two primary identifying characteristics of garter snakes. Now, I ranked garter snakes as a level two because they are significantly larger than the eastern worm snakes, and every once in a while, you will get a garter snake that's nippy that will strike at you. However, these are not dangerously venomous to humans. And the other reason these are level two is because they are extraordinarily common. They're actually kind of interesting because they're semi-aquatic. So kind of in a similar way to water snakes, Nerodia, um, garter snakes are often found in our riparian areas, which is where we are right now. Really neat species, totally harmless to humans, and I think the perfect level two snake to find and catch. All right, we'll let her go right here in these streamside rocks. Wow, guys, check it out. Right here, we have one of my absolute favorite species of snake, and what I would consider a perfect level three snake for this video. Let's see if we can pick it up gently. Hey! Oh, it's okay. No, it's okay. Hey, buddy. Hello. Wow, that's a really nice looking rat snake. All right, check it out. This is the black rat snake. And these are very commonly found in wooded areas um, where they will climb trees to look for food like birds. Now I would consider rat snakes a level three snake because they're relatively difficult to find. It depends on what location you're in. Usually if there's too much human activity, you won't find rat snakes because they're pretty big and need a good amount of open area to thrive. But if you're in an area with pretty much any trees, there's a decent chance there's a rat snake living there. And also because these aren't the fastest snakes out there, um, but they can be pretty quick. And especially at large sizes, if you're a novice snake hunter, it can be a little bit intimidating to pick up a rat snake for the first time. These guys don't usually bite. They will occasionally musk, but even when they do bite, it does not hurt very much. They're not very good at it. We'll get him back in the wild and hopefully he'll continue growing, get some good meals in him this spring and summer. And maybe in a couple of years, we'll come back and he'll be one of those six footers. What a beautiful snake. All right, ready to go back? See you, buddy. Ooh, that was a, that was a little chase, man. Okay, this I would say is probably 
a level four snake capture. This is a black racer snake, one of the largest non-venomous snakes that we get in this part of North Carolina, and also one of the most difficult to capture. Now, they're not difficult to capture because they're rare. They're difficult to capture because of how fast they are. Racer snakes are built for speed. They're much more elegant and aerodynamic than their black rat snake lookalikes, and they use that speed to their advantage, as well as excellent eyesight to hunt very active prey like lizards. Now, this species is also known to be pretty ornery when handled, and this individual is definitely no exception to that rule. You can see it's locked onto my eyes using its amazing vision, and it's checking me out to make sure I'm not a predator that's going to eat it. This is a really pretty individual, and it's a little bit stressed out, so we'll go ahead and set it right back down in the wild, and you can see it race away. All right, buddy, ready to go back? See ya. Now this right here is an absolutely gorgeous copperhead snake. Probably my absolute favorite species in North Carolina and definitely a level five snake to find. Why is it level five? Well, two reasons. One, look at it. The camouflage is absolutely ridiculous. These guys are like ninjas out here on the forest floor, perfectly adapted for camouflaging in the leaf litter, which helps them both ambush prey, but also hide from predators. And the second reason these are level five is because they do have hurt juice. Now it's not very potent. It's probably not gonna kill you if you get bit. Now, if you're allergic, that's a different story, but for the most part, like 99.9% .9 of the time, copperhead venom is not going to have any kind of serious impact on your body. This is how copperheads often behave when you do find them in habitat. These are 100% ambush predators. So when something like a mouse or a frog, or maybe even a lizard or a smaller snake wanders by him, he will strike, inject that hemotoxic venom, and then swallow the prey item whole. Now, people also get bit by copperheads pretty often because they're very common and because they're exceedingly well camouflaged. So if you step on one, you know, it's probably going to bite you. But the best way to avoid being bit by a copperhead is just to be aware when you're in good copperhead habitat. If you're on a hiking trail, or especially if you're off a hiking trail in any kind of wooded area in the eastern U.S. during the warmer months, it's always a good idea to watch where you step because if you respect their space, they will respect yours. So we will leave this adorable little copperhead right where he is. And man, it's just so cool to see them in habitat like this. He's frozen in place, so hard to see, but so beautiful. Thanks for joining me on today's adventure. And let me know what level of snake hunter you are in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to leave a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the Wild Report YouTube for new wildlife content coming on Thursday mornings as often as possible. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of the Wild Report, signing out.